Chairman, thank you very much. I did a request that time a few minutes ago, and I appreciate the gentleman living up to that. Uh, we talk about this issue as being bipartisan, but I think we also need to include all the facts of the case. If you look at CDC, uh, provisional data from CDC indicates that there were an estimated 100,306 100, drug overdose deaths in the United States during a 12-month period ending in April 2021, a 28.5% increase from the 78,056 deaths during the same period the year before. The new data that estimated drug overdoses uh, to 75,000 12-month period entered April 21, up from 56,000 the year before. So we are now headed to increase that substantially. Marijuana and drugs are crippling. They cause addiction, they cause crime, and they cause mental issues. And today I think it is important for us to know as people attack the police department, police are there to help secure communities to save people, to save people from criminals and dangerous products. Uh, during my lifetime, we have gone to where we uh, stopped allowing cigarette smoking in public, but now openly allow uh, marijuana to be just, just used all over the place in communities that uh, cause harm. In the uh, state of New York, in the year 2000, they implemented criminal justice legislation whereby it eliminated cash bail for nonviolent felonies. And yet, a man was arrested just a few weeks ago with 20,000 fentanyl pills. Each of the pills could, would, would be expected under that man's uh, thinking to be broken up and used a number of times. But 20,000 fentanyl pills was arrested, no bail. He was let free. It is important that we look at the facts of the case about what marijuana does to children, to families, to women. Last year, more drivers experienced serious crashes or deaths with cannabis in their system than any other drug. In 2020, 27 percent of drivers who were injured or killed in a motor vehicle crash tested positive for marijuana. The bottom line is it is addictive. It is addictive in causing people to live their daily lives not only with marijuana, but with these dangerous potencies. Cannabis potency rose every year on an average by 0.29 percent from 1970 to 2017, meaning it is true when I was in high school that it was far, far less, hundreds of times less potent. Today there are marketplaces that increase THC to increase not only the high, but also that rate that would cause addiction. It is important for us to know that the most popular strains in Colorado range from 17 percent to 28 percent THC by 2017, 400 percent increase from 1970. The product is being marketed. The product is being sold. The product is being advocated by people who are in it to make money. Slavery made money also and was a terrible uh, circumstance that this country and the world went through for many, many years. I began watching Drugs, Inc., which is an uh, is a uh, six-year or seven-year program that is on National Geographic. And they talk about both sides of the drug industry. They talk about how uh, these drug dealers go make money, they carry weapons, they threaten people, they kill people, they kill families. This is what the industry is. It is not the pretty opportunity that has been presented today. Over 300 people between the ages of 18 to 35 die every day of drug overdose. 
We hear today veterans, and I appreciate the gentleman for his service and other veterans who've taken time to be here today to present their story. And we do respect you for your service. But it is important to note that the reason why the VA does not want to allow this is because no more than they do want to do surgery or help a drunk person. They require a person to dry out. It takes about 30 days before marijuana is out of your system. And many of the issues that these people deal with with the VA are related to receptors, things that cause pain in their body. Marijuana, THC, directly affects receptors, which means that false positives or not the real circumstance would be understood by a treating physician at the VA. And so they don't, just like they don't want to treat a person who's drunk, they don't want to treat people and get something that is not actu the actual occurrence. So, Mr. Chairman, it is my hope that next time that there would be one of these hearings, the more facts of the case about the open harm to our children, to our communities, to this country, of the people who are able to go to work, who the people who provide transportation. Uh, and all I can tell you is I got involved in this years ago when there were many deaths on our highways and in our train systems uh, because people were uh, high. And whether it's high off alcohol or high off marijuana or high off heroin, people lose their life. Well, th thank you, Mr. Sessions, uh, for all, all those provocative insights, and well, I hope we'll get to address them. As well, I still have 158 remaining. I was. No, I think you were 158 over. Oh, 158. But, uh, but that's all right. Um, well, I we, thank we, we, I we, thank the gentleman we, very we, much. We wanted to hear from you, and and we thank you for your thoughts. Yes, sir. Um,